Hey guys, welcome to this first part of the subdivision modeling training series for Cinema 4D. In this first part, we're going to go over some very basic things on subdivision modeling. The first thing is the name itself, SubD. Of course, it stands for subdivision. And in this case, subdivision works with the hypernerve object. Unlike most other 3D applications, Cinema 4D does not have a smooth function. So in order to smooth out an object, such as a organic object, and you want to use subdivision modeling, you have to use a hypernerb object. So in order to better understand how to properly model something when using the subd modeling method, you need to understand how a hypernerb works and what the word hypernerb actually means. So let's take a look at the word nerb. Now I'm sure that some of you probably think that the word NURB is actually some weird or strange 3D term. Well, it is in the sense of it being used in the 3D community. However, the word NURB is actually an abbreviation, and it stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Spline. So in this case, if we could better understand how a B-Spline works, then we should be able to better understand how a hypernerve works because after all, the hypernerve is basically just a hyper non-uniform rational B-spline. So let's take a look at the B-spline to see exactly how it works. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to go to a different view, a top view for this. And let's first talk about the linear spline. So I'm going to grab a linear spline and I'm just going to draw out a 90 degree angle. Okay, so here is our 90 degree angle and it's made up of these three linear points that form this linear spline. Now in the case of this being linear, there is no ramping, there's no curve, it is just a straight line between two points. No matter where these points are positioned, there's always going to be a straight line between the points. There is no ramp, there's no curving, there is no interpolation, there is no fall off of the spline itself. So now let's convert these over to a B spline. So I'm going to select all three points and I'm going to click on the spline. I'm going to come over here to its attributes and I'm going to change the type from linear to B spline. Instantly, now you can see how the B-spline works. We no longer have a linear or straight, sharp 90 degree angle here. We now have a curved, ramped angle. Now, if we want to tighten up this corner, because this may be a little too rounded, what if we want to take this rounded edge here, and what if we want to bring it and sharpen it up to where it only rounds just a little bit up towards this upper point? because in this case, this might be a little too rounded for us. Well, in order to do that, you have to insert more points because with the B-spline, the closer the points are, the more sharp the corner will be. So with the three points selected, we'll right click and choose subdivide. And I'm just gonna click on the little box here to bring up the window for it. And since we're dealing with a spline, we can't subdivide by a level of one. We have to subdivide by level two. So we'll click OK. And now that's going to put in a point between these two. And it also put in this point here, which is between these two points here. Now the problem is that it inserted these two points and they are not properly lined up with the points that they're in between. So we need to take this point and center it out to keep it in line with the other ones. And this one here needs to be put in line with these as well. Now notice by inserting these two points, we have now greatly tightened up this corner. Now what if we want to adjust it further? Maybe that's a little too much rounding. Well, we can take this point and drag it up and then take that one and drag it over. And notice that by doing that, we have now tightened up that corner and sharpened it up even more. This is the way the B-spline works. The closer these points are together to this edge, the more sharp this corner will be. 
And if you don't want this corner to be that sharp, if you want it to be rounded more, then all you have to do is put a little distance between these control points from this 90 degree angle here. So if we'll just pull that one down and then this one can be pulled over. And now we've rounded it out more. So this is how the hypernerve object works, only except with a spline, this is how it works with edges in your mesh. So let's talk a little bit about subdividing. So I'm going to create a plane. And I'm just going to take the segments to one for the width and the height. And to see this a little better in the viewport, I'm just going to change the shading options here. Okay, so now this plane, we're going to make it editable. This is what's known as a quad. Now it's called a quad because it's made up of four edges. We have one, two, three, and four. Now the term subdivision simply means you're taking one polygon or more and you are splitting those polygons into multiple polygons. Now in the case of subdividing, here we have this polygon and if we subdivide it, we're going to subdivide to a level of four. So what that means is that this polygon is going to be cut or subdivided so that it becomes four different polygons. So we'll go into polygon mode so I'm going to right click and choose subdivide, but instead of clicking on the icon here, I want to bring up the attribute window for it. So we want to choose a level of one because that is the lowest level. And when we subdivide by this value of one, it's going to subdivide by a level of four. So we'll click okay. And now, and I'll tell you what, I need to get rid of this grid here. Okay, so here's our polygon. It was one, we subdivided, now it is four. You can see we have one face, two, three, and four. Now if we decide to subdivide this again, what's gonna happen is each one of these four faces will become an additional four faces within it. So if we select this face here, and we subdivide it again by a, a value of one, you can see that now, that one face has now become four. Now by subdividing this face here and leaving these three out, you can see that we've introduced some triangles. Now we'll get to the triangles a little later because that is another very important aspect of sub-D modeling. So if I were to undo that, and we'll just select all of them, and we'll go back and we'll subdivide again by a value of one, you can see that each one of those was split into four. And now if we subdivide again, each one of these faces will be split by a level of four. And it keeps going and going and going and going by a level of four. This is the way the hypernerb will smooth your object. However, it does so using the B-spline method, which means that here we had the plane. But if you notice, none of the corners were rounded. Well, this is because we just used a basic subdivision command and we did not apply a hypernerve to it to actually round it out. Okay, so let's introduce a hypernerve object and drop the plane into it. Now, I'm only going to leave the editor subdivision to one because remember, we were subdividing by a value of one. So remember when we subdivided by that value, it split our plane into four different polys. So here's the control cage for our plane, and you can see that it is a square. However, you can see that the hypernerb has subdivided it once, and it split it into four different polygons, but at the same time, it has also rounded out the corners. Now the reason why it looks so rough, and it's not very smooth, is because we're using a very low subdividing level. So if we were to go back to the hypernerbs and change the subdivision editor to a level of two, you can see now that each one of those has been subdivided into four polygons, and now the corners look a little more rounded. So if we take this up one more level to three, you can see that now the edges are looking a lot better, and it's beginning to take the shape of a circle. And you can also see that each one of those four polygon faces has now been divided by a level of four. Okay, so let's go one step further. What if we wanted to control the corners? Because maybe this is a little too rounded. Maybe we want 
something that's a square shape but maybe we want instead of the rounding to be here maybe we want it to be more out here towards this sharp linear edge here of the plane so that would be very easy to do all we would have to do is insert a couple control edges to tighten up those corners so I'm gonna go into edge mode or you could go into point mode if you like because we're going to be moving edges and of course the edges uh, are connected with the point so you can either move the edge or you can move the point in this case I'm just going to use edge mode so I'm gonna grab the knife tool and I'm going to change the mode to loop and I'm also going to disable restrict to selection so I'm going to make a control cut here on this edge and you notice that by doing that suddenly this corner becomes a little sharper and then I'm going to create one more edge cut to create a square in this corner now notice that by doing that we've now tightened up the corner here where it's not so rounded as it is over here on this side so in order to get the other three sides to tighten up to mimic this corner we need to insert some more control loops so we'll just create another one there and one over here and now you can see that it's looking more like a square but the corners are rounded because of the hypernerve. Okay, so what if you don't want your corners to be that sharp, or what if you want them to be a little sharper? Well, all you need to do is grab your control edges here that you created and move them in and out. Now you notice when I move this one further away, these corners become more rounded. Remember, that's the way the B-spline works. The closer the edges or points are together, the sharper that corner will be. And the closer we move them together, the more sharp that corner is becoming. Okay, so that concludes this first part, but don't worry, there's a lot more to come.